Welcome to Modi Makes. What's good, everybody? My name is Modi. This is Modi Makes, and today I'm gonna be making a wedding gift for two very good old friends of mine. They got married a little bit ago, and I was a groomsman in this wedding. And since I'm a terrible friend and a terrible groomsman, I haven't gotten them a wedding present yet. But they moved into a house together, and they could use some art for their walls, which is a win-win for me because that means I get to make them something very special and personal. And most importantly, I don't have to spend any money on it. So I set out to make them a very unique painting, something that I haven't created before. And I thought that the best way to do that was to try a new technique that I haven't tried in my artwork in the past. And that technique is to try to make a very abstracted, heavily textured background to my work that I think will bring a full new dimension into my pieces and, you know, could be something that I'm gonna wanna try to use in the future in a variety of different ways if it works out well. So let's grab one of our good, good little canvases and let's get ready to paint that background. So I'm gonna be working with two different shades of green for this background starting with a desaturated dark sort of olive green color and I'm just gonna lay down a flat layer of that on the entirety of the canvas then I'm gonna come back with a nice bright lush green color and lay down a layer of that on top of it And then here comes the fun part. While that layer is still wet, I'm gonna grab a piece of newspaper and crumple it up into a ball. And then I'm going to take that newspaper and dab it and scrape it all over that canvas on that top wet layer to get a nice sense of sort of this rough, rocky texture, exposing that darker green below and giving it this sort of light and shadow effect. But I didn't think that gave it enough dimension. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray that bright green color directly onto the newsprint paper and then dab it and scrape it along the canvas some more. Then I'm going to hit it with some nice drippy splotty spray paint effects from both colors to balance it out and get it just right where I want it with many different layers and many different types of textures going throughout. You can achieve this by just lightly holding down on the spray cap to get it to just barely spurt out a little bit of paint giving you these nice thick drips and drops. All right, with the background all completed and ready to go, it's time to take it over to the studio to start my character work on this canvas. I'm gonna start as I usually do by putting a couple pieces of newsprint paper down and taking them to the canvas, then marking off all the edges of the canvas where the paper is folded over. Then within this box area where I've marked off, I'm going to set down a doodle grid, which I will use as reference to transfer over my sketch. Once this doodle grid is complete, I will take a picture of it with my iPad and overlay that picture with the digital sketch I have on Procreate so I can see where all my lines line up perfectly and transfer over the sketch as accurately as possible. From there, it's just a matter of transferring over a pencil sketch onto that newsprint paper by drawing the lines exactly where they line up on the reference photo that I have with my doodle grid. Then I'll come in with a really sort of improv patchwork of transfer paper in the most important areas that I think need to be put down as accurately as possible because I forgot to pick up more transfer paper of the darker variety that I need for this because the gray one just won't show up enough on this crazy background that I've set up. Then I'll grab a big ballpoint pen and go over all of the line work that I put down on my sketch, transferring it over using that transfer paper below. And it seems to have worked well enough, so I'm just gonna draw in a little bit of those extra lines that I need to put back in and darken up the stuff that I have down because it's kind of hard to see with all the crazy texture going on. Now comes the fun parts. So let's grab those pasta pens that we love so much and get ready to lay down our initial line work onto this painting. Starting, of course, as always with the black lines to get a nice, 
clear sketch down of all the areas we're gonna to need to paint in in the future. And now that you can finally see where all the lines need to be, it's time to start getting in with the colors and filling in all of those different colored areas in the piece. And now that you guys can see what the figure is actually starting to look like, I can tell you a little bit about this painting. This painting is titled The Union, and it's a reference, obviously, to the marriage of my two friends that I'm going to be giving this to. The union is a reference to two people becoming one person through the union of marriage. That is why I have one figure that's split down the center and creates two actual figures through that center line, which is going to be that arm that's going up to the top holding that bouquet of flowers. On one side, you have one figure kneeling down on one knee, opening up a ring box and proposing their love as if they were proposing to the other person. On the other side, you have another figure in a wedding dress and veil, throwing the bouquet of flowers just like you would have after the ceremony at the wedding, showing both sides of the beginning and the end of the union, creating the whole story. And since it's one of my paintings, you know I had to funk it up a little bit and I gave the groom side of the image some crazy colorful Chuck Taylors to be wearing on there just because it'd be more interesting. Now with all our flat colors laid down, we can go back over all of our line work again and make it as crispy and clean as possible. In this part, I used three different types of pens to cover up all the lines and get that line weight variety. I again used the PC3M and PC5M bullet tipped pens, but then I also brought in the PC8K chisel tip black Posca marker. And then I blended all of these together to create smooth sort of chiseled lines lines that go from very thin to very thick and just gives it more of a calligraphic and painterly feel to the figure. And with this step completed, your painting is gorgeous and ready for those final shots. Well, there you have it, my peoples. The union is complete, and I am absolutely ecstatic with how this turned out. My experiment with the background went great. If you like the video, go ahead and give me a like. That would be amazing. If you like me, you like the channel, and you want to help support me, the number one thing that you can do is to subscribe. I really couldn't thank you enough if you did. It means the world to me. With all that out of the way, without further ado. Thanks for watching.